welcome back everyone to another episode of the doom series and in this video we are going to fix the problem of uh, having far sectors show away uh, in our maps all right guys so let's begin by looking at our problem so if i'm going to go ahead and run make uh, you can see that i can see the sky here that's rendered and it's being rendered correctly but you can also see that i can see these sectors that are far away here so if i stand in this window you can see i can see the exit sector from here and uh, that the reason that sector is being displayed is because well that is within our uh, view cone so it's at the correct elevation and it's not being hidden by the sectors that are drawn here so uh, the reason we don't want that to be visible is because that's uh, not how the original doom worked it did not have those far away sectors visible you can see we can also see this other sector so you know we can see uh, this part here uh, we can also see this one and you can also see this one so if i go here you can see that we can uh, see all of these sectors even though these should not be visible so we need to figure out some way to actually not uh, render these sectors so the way i figured out and there you know you could solve this in multiple ways but the way we are going to use is that uh, uh, we are going to use stencil buffer so stencil buffer in opengl is like just a uh, normal buffer like the color buffer or the depth buffer but we can fill the stencil buffer with the, uh, our own custom numerical values which we can use to do different kind of stencil tests and basically implement any kind of custom functionality. So the idea is that we are going to be rendering quads and these quads or um, basically you could say invisible quads actually because these won't be seen. So we'll make some invisible quads which will uh, be going from uh, the top of the ceilings to a specific point say the highest sector in the current map. So we'll be uh, having quads that are stretched from the current ceiling to the highest ceiling in the current map and these quads will be used to represent a stencil for the map so that the uh, for the sky actually so these quads will be used to represent a stencil for the sky so that the uh, sky is only rendered in these quads and we will change the sky so that instead of being rendered uh, you know behind everything basically we are going to render the sky first in front of everything but it will not be rendered in the places where we actually want our level geometry to appear so it will only be rendered in the places where those stencil buffers are and in this way it will not hide any of the correct places so for example this wall won't be hidden because this will not be covered by the stencil buffer and the upper portion will be hidden because well that's going to be covered by the stencil buffer there's nothing here and this wall here won't be hidden because this won't be in the stencil buffer but we'll have the stencil buffer above this which will actually cover those sectors all the way there and this will be uh, covered by the sky which means that they won't actually be seen and that's going to solve our problem so now let's go ahead and look at how do we actually implement that. Now uh, for actually doing that it's very simple. We are going to first begin by opening up render.h and render.c. Inside of render.h the only thing I've changed is I've added a new shader called shader plane. You can see we've got this shader here. And if I go on to render.c, you can see we have got the code for this shader, uh, plane vertex shader. It only takes a single position in and a model view and projection matrix. It multiplies those together. And for the fragment, it just uh, kind of outputs a white color right now. You can make that a uniform, but uh, uh, that doesn't really matter because this quad is not going to be actually seen. So this will be the shader that we'll use uh, to render our quad or the stencil quad with. So that's uh, pretty awesome. And if I go here, you can... Uh, see that now we are render rendering our sky we no longer uh, do position dot uh, x y w w we just uh, out the correct position and actually we can just go ahead and uh, do this here directly so we can just say uh, gl position is equal to this uh, anyways now let's go ahead and look at the next thing which is that uh, inside of the render init now we enable our stencil testing so what we do is we first of all of course gl enable the gl stencil test and then we use two functions first is the gl stencil operation and one is the gl stencil function uh, now the gl stencil operation has three arguments the first tells us if the stencil test fails then what we do with the stencil value the second tells us if the stencil test passes but the depth test fails then what we do with the stencil value uh, value and this represents uh, if both tests pass then what we do with the stencil value so if any of the tests fail we just uh, keep the old value so gl keep means that we don't really change the value we keep the stencil buffer's value whatever it was earlier however if both tests pass we are going to replace the value in the stencil 
buffer with the new one so this is the stencil operation the only stencil operation that we are going to be using so we just uh, initialize this one now gl stencil func uh, function actually represents uh, uh, this is actually going to be changed kind of so what we do is uh, currently we tell it that it's going to always pass the stencil test and it's going to write a value of one so you can choose any number here and 0xff is just the bitwise mask you can use any other mask here but uh, well we are we are not going to change anything so we are going to just use 0xff mask which means that uh, nothing going to be changed because uh, all bits are set so ending with that won't actually change the number at all so we don't really we aren't really using the mask here so we are not going to uh, have that uh, be any other value except 0xff so we'll have this gl stencil func here and uh, the other thing is that when we are doing render clear we are going to make sure that we also clear the gl stencil buffer bit anyways let's go back inside of our uh, render sky texture uh, draw sky and uh, uh, by the way inside of init shares you can see we have also got an entry for shader plane now so now let's look in the, the uh, render draw sky function now first of all we go ahead and uh, change our uh, stencil function to gl equal so as i said we are going to uh, you know when we are drawing our quads the stencil quads we are going to fill the stencil buffer with one wherever the sky is supposed to be drawn so when drawing the sky we check if uh, the stencil buffer value is equal basically to one and if it is equal to one only then our stencil buffer or the uh, you know sky will be drawn and then we set the gl stencil mask now this mask represents the mask with which we actually you know and the bitwise and the value that we are writing and since we don't want the renderer uh, sky to write we only want this to read we actually set the mask to zero in the beginning now uh, then we d disable face culling and then we use the sky program then we bind the vertex array and we draw it and then we enable face culling then we set the stencil mask back to 0xfs and then we set the gl stencil, uh, stencil function back to gl always with 1 and 0xfs so basically we restore the state to back to where it was so yeah that's some pretty interesting things and now let's go ahead and look inside of our engine.c to see how we actually utilize this functionality so in here you can see we have got uh, a um, stencil node here which is uh, basically has a single matrix for call transformation and uh, another uh, stencil node which is next so we're going to basically store the stencil all of the places where we are supposed to draw the stencil quads as a linked list and each of those lists will have a single transformation and we'll just render a quad mesh with that transformation and uh, write the value to the stencil buffer so we have got another structure here called stencil quad list which consists of a head and a tail and uh, you can see we have also got uh uh, basically uh, yeah I have also changed some of the stuff here so instead of taking GL map and map as arguments like we were doing here since map and GL map were just global variables I decided not to take those as arguments and instead just uh, uh, you know, use those global variables so this kind of simplifies these functions and yes let's go here you can see we have got a max sector height which I have currently set to 500 just for uh, demonstration let's just remove that because we are gonna actually calculate this and uh, here we have got a stencil list you know we just created this structure here so we are actually using it so we have got a stencil list here which represents a head and a tail you know node and uh, we've also got a mesh which is the quad mesh that we're gonna be using uh, so now let's go under engine dot init and you can see that uh, uh, we set the stencil list to null null which means the head is null and the tail is also null before we call generate meshes and in the end we get the stencil quad vertices we just get a single quad vertices and then the indices for that you know nothing too special here and then we call mesh create with our quad mesh and we say vertex layout plane here because we are not providing it with any other thing except the position and then we go four which is the actual number of vertices and the stencil quad vertices for the data then six for the number of indices and then the data so yeah that's uh, going to generate a quad mesh for us and uh, now let's go ahead and actually use this so if i go ahead and go under the engine render function uh, we'll come to this render function actually let's look at this here so you can see that uh, in the beginning we first of all go ahead and set the gl stencil mask to 0x00 because when we are drawing our normal map we don't want the stencil buffer to be updated because uh, uh, we don't want the sky to be rendered there so we set the stencil mask to 00 and then we render the root node which means we basically draw our whole map then we set the stencil mask back to ff and what that means is that uh, uh, 
that now we actually have uh, uh, 0x ff as our stencil mask and that means that we are going to actually write to the stencil buffer so then we go ahead and set the node to stencil list head and basically loop over the whole linked list and for each entry in the linked list we just draw the quad mesh with the transformation provided by the node and we use shader plane here and uh, yeah that's pretty much it and in the end we just draw the sky here and this uh, sky is drawn at the end and uh, this is going to fill up the stencil buffer with the correct values and this sky is now going to be drawn based on the values from those stencil buffers so you can see for the map get sector uh, I've changed this you know all of these functions have been changed because they don't no longer take the map arguments anyways let's go under generate meshes so you can see we first of all set our max sector height to zero then we loop over each of the sectors and basically calculate the max sector height as you uh, as you would expect so if the uh, ceiling of this is greater than the max sector height we set that to the current ceiling uh, anyways after we have calculated that you can see that we do uh, this here now we are going to understand the reason we do this here in a second first of all let's go under generate node now uh, there are basically two kinds of walls from which we need to draw our stencil quads one is the uh, middle walls or the full walls which, you know, which we want to our uh, stencil quad to be drawn from and the other is the actual upper wall so the upper segment of the walls uh, so we want these two walls we want our uh, stencil quads to be drawn so if the if the uh, line depth is two sided you can see we don't do anything if it's lower um, but for the upper side of the you know uh, wall uh, we have got the functionality for setting the uh, stencil quad here so we only want the stencil quad to be present if the sky is actually supposed to be drawn here so we check if the sector ceiling texture is equal to the sky flat if it is then we get the quad height to our max sector height minus p3 dot y and the reason we use p3 is because uh, that's the actual start so if i go here p3 you can see it has got the front sector ceiling and the start dot x and start dot y so we get our start vertex and get its basically front sector ceiling value and we uh, get the max sector height minus that to kind of raise our uh, you know current sector to that value and that gives us the quad height and we scale it according to that width uh, width we calculated earlier in the texture uh, you know calculations and quad height and for that we just leave it at one for the translation we just translate to p uh, translate it to p3 which is the start point of the wall then for the rotation we rotate it on the y-axis by the value given to us by 8 and 2 f which means uh, you know we get the angle according to y and x and this y and x we have calculated in the uh, you know uh, texturing calf calculations so we can just use those uh, without having to recalculate anything and then in the end we multiply the rotation with the translation and multiply that by the scale which gives us our model matrix and then we call this function called instant stencil quad which I've created up here uh, down here actually and uh, uh, this just pushes that value onto the qu uh, stencil quad so if the stencil list head is null then we set in then we allocate the memory for that head and we set its value to be transformation and for the next we just set null and then we at the tail to be the head and if the head is not null then we get the tails next value and allocate uh, you know memory for that then we set the actual value of that to transformation and null basically the correct stencil node and then in the end we set the stencil uh, list tail to be stencil list tail and the next value is that so we make sure that the tail is always at the end while the head will be at the start so this is just a utility function uh, anyways uh, that was uh, how we did for the upper walls now if I go here and uh, uh, let's look uh, here at uh, where we are doing it for our normal walls so these are uh, you know the uh, flat walls so you know the walls here we have got only one sided line depth and for here you can see we basically do the same thing there's nothing really that has changed uh, we use b3.y here and we just scale and rotate and glitch and everything and uh, yeah nothing actually has changed and then we just call insert stencil quad with this model matrix that we have calculated and yeah that uh, well that does work and you might be wondering now that why are we this is uh, you know some not too complicated stuff but you might be wondering why this uh, why we are having a stencil quad here as well so to show you the reason we need this i'm going to go ahead and run make without this and uh, uh, you can see that we get our sky rendered in these places however the sky is not actually rendered above us because while it's being rendered to the uh, point where the highest uh, you know sector is uh, it's not actually being rendered at 
that uh, you know the point where we actually want it to be rendered because which is above ourselves because that's not covered by any sectors so what i do is that well there, you, there could be multiple ways you could try to create a custom mesh but the, those are all very complicated instead what we do is we calculate the bounds of our ma uh, map so we calculate you know how actually big our map is whole map and then we go ahead and uh, uh, basically create a whole uh, big quad which is going to cover the whole map and we position that at the point of the highest sector and then we uh, you know place it above here and that means that whenever we are looking above we'll have that uh, at the point of the highest sector and we'll be able to uh, see the uh, you know we will be able to basically see uh, our sky above as well. So this, you can see what this does is that we first of all get the width, which is the map, the so maximum x minus the minimum x, which gives us the width of the whole map. And then the height, the map's uh, maximum y minus the map's minimum y. Then we translate by the, uh, this is a vector, and we translate by uh, the minimum x, and then for the y value, we of course choose the max sector height, but we translate by the maximum y because we want our quad to be positioned correctly according to how it's created. So for the x we need to use minimum for the y we need to use maximum and then we get the scale here which is just scale to the width and height that we calculated right now then for the translation we just translate it to that vector for the rotation we rotate it on the x axis actually because this quad is uh, uh, we want it to be actually lying down so we get the x axis and rotate it by 90 degree which is pi by 2 in radians and uh, then for the model we just multiply everything together and then we insert this and as a result you can see we can go ahead and uh, you can see we can look around and we can see our sky rendered and we no longer see those sectors far away because these are being covered by the sky they're still there we can go ahead and go into those sectors but uh, uh, we can't see them if we are uh, seeing the sky here so you can see that these are no longer visible from here and you can see that everything is working however there is a small problem you can see there's some z fighting going on here which is uh, uh, not very pleasant so we need to solve uh, that as well now solving that is actually not going to be very difficult at all we are going to just to increase this by 0.1 so we are going to just increase the translation by 0.1 uh, and you can see that it's actually uh, not causing that much of a problem at all but this might cause some kind of seams they are not going to be visible but you might see a little bit of gap so instead of doing that we are going to just go ahead and say uh, max sector height so we're going to say max sector height and we're going to add just one to it you can add point one if you want i'm going to just add a whole one here and uh, now you should not be able to see any z fighting because it should be higher than any sector in the current map so anyways guys this is going to be pretty much it for this video and as you can see we have got our sky rendering perfectly working here and uh, there are no bugs for that we are seeing stuff that we are not supposed to see so this is going to be pretty much it for this video i'll see you in the next one stay tuned for that make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss the next one and share this video with other people as well and bye